So before I get into this video, I wanted to let you guys know about some of the rules I applied for this challenge and just maps that I didn't include and all that kind of stuff. So first of all, this video was meant to be like one massive video with every single game, but we decided it would be a bit too long to make that. Uh, and so we've had to split it up in like different parts. And with the rules and stuff, because Black Ops 6 was only four months away at the time of starting the challenge, uh, I wanted to give myself a decent amount of time in order to get everything done without rushing, so I didn't include any maps that took uh, longer than 12 hours, except for uh, Black Ops 3 Nacked. And I was also only going to be doing round-based maps, so no Dead Ops Arcade, uh, I consider that its own kind of separate mode, and also no objective-based modes like Outbreak from Cold War, or Dirt and Fang on Vanguard, all that kind of stuff. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Advanced Warfare is probably the most hated game for zombies after Vanguard, and honestly for high rounds, it is really boring. <laughs> but I will say, Advanced Warfare Zombies is probably going to be the most unique zombies experience you're going to see during all of these round 100s. And the main reason for this is it's the only game to actually have a jetpack kind of movement in it. Because we're, we're not really uh, counting the Shadows of Evil wall jump stuff. So because of this movement, it just makes the game feel actually kind of fresh for me actually going onto it here. But before we get fully into it, I just want to point out that Outbreak is the only round 100 I did on Advanced Warfare because once again all of the other maps took over 12 hours and that's for the round 100 speedrun meaning that take me about 14 to 15 hours and also uh, this is the only map uh, I'm actually comfortable with playing to round 100 on and that I could comfortably say I would be able to get to round 100 in a reasonable amount of time. So without further ado let's get on to it. For those of you who have seen the other videos in this round 100 challenge, you will know the drill by now. I'll be starting off in the spawn room with the Atlas pistol, and then I will be going to the wall by in order to get the MK14. Now, I've got to be honest, I think that Advanced Warfare has one of the better starting room wall buys, as this MK14 for a starting weapon is absolutely incredible. The fact it has 20 bullets in its mag and can like maybe two shot to the head on round four is actually just really nice. But in my first game here, I was pretty much trying to familiarize myself with how the game works again. So I do end up staying in the spawn room until the end of round four like normal. However, after I open that first door, I just open up the map on the game in order to kind of see where everything is. And this is one of the coolest features that Advanced Warfare actually has over probably every other game. Which is when you pause the game, you'll actually get a map show up of the layout of the map that you're actually playing at that moment in time. And another cool thing is on that map, it will show you the symbols of every kind of EXO upgrade that you can get on the map. And to me, I, I just thought that was really cool. Not only this, uh, a couple of other quality of life things that Outbreak, or sorry, Advanced Warfare really has, is the in-game timer on your scoreboard, as well as an individual round timer next to the round in the top left-hand corner of the screen. And now, I absolutely wish that these features were more prominent in the Treyarch games, because unfortunately we didn't really get access to that kind of stuff until Black Ops 4, and even then, you had to turn it on, I believe, in custom mutations, which kind of really sucks that it isn't just a default setting you can switch on and off. But yeah, props to Advanced Warfare for adding this quality of life feature. It was just super nice. But as I was beginning to familiarize myself with the map, I would then, at the end of round 5, go into the main area where the exosuit is. Because in order to upgrade your exosuit, you first need the exosuit, and that's where you pick it up. And so, after I'd ended the round in the main area where the exosuit is, I'd then be making my way back to where exo health is, pick that up, and also pick up exo soldier. 
Now, something you guys might be interested in is the health actually works quite a bit differently in Advanced Warfare than all of the other games. So, as you can imagine, Exo Health is the equivalent of Juggernaug, and up until now, the games that we've played have been a two hit down system, so the first hit of the zombies will not kill you, but the second hit will. But if you have Juggernaug on those games, you can then withstand four hits of the zombies, you'll be on something called a red screen, and then the fifth hit will down you. With the exception of Permajug on Black Ops 2, in which case you are a four hit down, the third hit will uh, red screen you without Jug, and then with Jug you'll be a five hit red screen and a six hit down. But Advanced Warfare, you have a baseline of a three hit red screen, four hit down, and then with Exo Health, it will actually take seven hits from the zombies to down you. And when I first heard about this, I was calling bullshit. I did not think in any way that was the case because of how quickly I actually ended up going down half the time. But I did test it for myself and it is in fact a seven hit down. So Exo Health was obviously helping me stay alive for a lot longer. But what does Exo Soldier do? Well, from my experience, it seems to have just kind of stopped my swaying when I'm sprinting and kind of kept me more controlled. But it also helps you switch your weapons a lot faster and instantly chuck out grenades, which is going to be important later on in the game. Then after this, I would get Exo Medic. Now, this is the equivalent of Quick Revive. After you go down, you revive yourself. I would get XR Reload as well, which is basically the equivalent of Speed Cola. And finally, I would also get XO Slam. And XO Slam is a completely new upgrade or perk. The way it works is after you've jetpacked into the air, if you basically press your crouch button, you will kind of slam down on top of the zombies or into the zombies and damage them. But once you've activated this ability, you won't be able to activate it again for another 10 seconds. Now, a few other things that are worth mentioning in this game. Instead of dog rounds sometimes, you would get these things called infected rounds. And these infected rounds basically work as a kind of special round akin to dog rounds. And what will happen is instead of taking damage from every zombie slap, if you get infected by one of these zombies, you'll start to get a timer countdown on your player's uh, icon. Now, I can't remember exactly what happens when the counter reaches zero, but you either take it down or the game is completely over. It's one or the other. And also, you can cure yourself of the infection by going to the decontamination zone, which you can activate for, I believe, either 250 or 500 credits. Not only that, these rounds are actually super short, like about a minute long, even in the higher rounds. And the second thing I want to talk about are these kind of icons that you'll be seeing around the map. And you'll be seeing some in the shape of like a drone, a turret, or something that resembles credits, or something that's kind of like scratch marks. And every single one of these different things is a pod sent by the Atlas Corporation in order to try and help you survive, essentially. The credit drop pod can give you either like anywhere from, I think, 300 to 1000 credits. The drone drop pod will either give you a gunner drone or an explosive rocket drone. And the drone will basically follow you around the map for a couple of minutes, shooting the zombies with either the gun or the explosives, whichever one it actually gave you. I believe the turret also has two variations of either a laser turret or an explosive turret. And then these scratch marks are called camouflage, which is basically like popping an in-plane sight gobblegum on Black Ops 3, in which it basically makes you invisible to the zombies for about 20 seconds or so. So alongside getting all my perks, I would also be hitting the game's equivalent of a box, which is the 3D printer. There's something I want to point out real quick about the 3D printer, because a lot of people actually got the wrong idea about this. And that's that the 3D printer will not give you exactly what the 3D printer shows at that time. It is completely random. You cannot guarantee yourself any weapons from this printer. And a lot of people believe this. So let, let me give you an example. 
Uh, one of the best shotguns in the game is the S12. And if you saw the S12 in the 3D printer and you stopped it on the 3D printer, you are not guaranteed it just because you stopped it on it there. It is still completely random, just like the mystery box on BO1, BO2, etc. And so I would be trying to get a couple of things from this 3D printer. Like mentioned before, the S12 shotgun is one of the best weapons in the game for the early rounds. Not only does it give you an insane amount of points, it is also pretty strong and can take you pretty much all the way to round 30, maybe sometimes even 35. Something else I would be going out of the 3D printer, this is for like the first 30 rounds, would be either the crossbow or the mayhem. Now these are both really good explosive weapons and very high damage outputs. And it's pretty much what I'll be using for when I'm done with the very early round camping. And finally, to begin with, I'd be using uh, nano swarm grenades or looking for them out of the 3D printer. But then later on, after I'd failed this map a couple of times, I then switched to distraction drones for safety. But unfortunately, in this very first attempt, I had absolutely nothing and I ended up basically taking it down on round 14 and I just quit the game. On my next game, however, I managed to get the nano swarms, the S12 and the mayhem all out of the first 3D printer location. So at this point, it was time for me to basically start camping. And so this initial camping strategy is basically I would have the other door closed in spawn and I would make my way all the way around and camp on this little stair bit here. And this is located in the MP11 room. Something else I forgot to mention, uh, which is very useful in these runs, are something called contact grenades. And you can find them pretty much right next to Exo Health, like just on the right hand side in the hallway. And pretty much I would just use a nano swarm grenade and then use the S12 in order to finish the zombies off. And now this is where another very interesting mechanic that uh, Advanced Warfare brought to us comes into play. And this is pretty much when I ran out of ammo in my S12. There's actually an upgrade machine which replaces the Pack-a-Punch machine. And these upgrade machines are actually all over the map, by the way. Well, when I say all over the map, I think there's two upgrade machines. There's maybe three, but I definitely know of two. And the way upgrading your weapons works in this game is instead of just Pack-a-Punching once and that's it, you can actually Pack-a-Punch up to 20 times. Or if you complete the Easter egg, you can get it up to 25 times. And so the way it works is instead of getting like a mag increase and a very hefty power increase as well, you will instead get a slight damage increase and a complete ammo refill of your weapon. And thinking about this now, this is probably the reason they would never added in any one hit wonder weapons into this game. Because every single one of these wonder weapons that is in this game drop off at a certain point and it's not even like they drop off at a high round either. They drop off probably way before 50. But anyway, whenever I'd run out of ammo, I would then upgrade my weapon by the upgrade weapon station that is quite literally right next to me and then continue shooting the zombies. Something to mention though is at Mark 10 for the S12, you will in fact get a magazine increase of it going up to 15 bullets in the mag instead of 10. And I think you also get an increase of like 20 bullets in the reserve. You won't be able to see it because my uh, my little icon is in the bottom right hand corner. But I think you have like either 80 or 100 normally and it goes up to 120 when you reach mark 10. In fact, thinking about it, I think it would make more sense for it to be 80 and then 120. But the mayhem and the crossbow act a little bit differently. Instead of their uh, magazines increasing at mark 10, they actually increase at mark 7. I'm not too sure why they decided to do this, but it's pretty nice because they are quite strong. But in my first attempt here, I managed to camp all the way until round 31. Which is honestly quite a long time for camping just with, you know, kind of non-wonder weapons. But on top of this, 
It was actually super quick to get here. It only took like 32 or 33 minutes to get to round 31, which is absolutely incredible. Not to mention that these early rounds were actually super fun to play. And I'm not too sure why people really hated the zombies because the first, you know, 40 to 50 rounds are actually really entertaining for me. But anyway, at this point on round 31, I had to open the door, which meant I had to change up my strategy. Which leads me to the main area where I would be playing for the rest of the game. But from rounds 30 to about round 50, I'd be using the Mayhem and the Crossbow. I would trade out my S12 for the Crossbow. And the strategy here is to switch this trap on, this laser trap, whenever it was ready. And then when it was off, I would be jumping from side to side here with either the Mayhem or the Crossbow in order to kill the zombies. And as I say, it works pretty well all the way up until round 50, in which the strategy just becomes using that one trap in order to kill the zombies. But there was one problem with playing in here, and that's the fact that there wasn't really an upgrade station anywhere nearby for me to, uh, you know, upgrade my weapons when I was low on ammo. So this pretty much means I had to use any ammo I had at the time, and that would pretty much only last me until the end of the round, and then at the end of the round I would have to run and find myself another upgrade station. And to begin with, I thought that the closest one was by Exo Soldier. And so I would be running down there, upgrading my Mayhem and my Crossbow, and then running all the way back. And the round would kind of be starting just as I was running back. But later on, I remembered a pretty interesting and cool mechanic in order to traverse the map a little bit faster. Now in this main room, you'll see something sticking out, and this is called the Trash Shoot. And if you take the trash chute in the exosuit room, it will lead you every single time to the spawn room. And so every single time I would be using the trash chute at the end of the rounds in order to go to spawn, to then go into the MP11 room, which is where I was camping. I would then use the upgrade station there, and in the MP11 room on the right hand side, there is also a trash chute, and that will lead you every single time back into the exosuit room, which is where you play for the entire game anyway. So it was a perfect mode of transportation, and I'm really glad I actually remembered this because it took me quite some time. The only downside to the trash chutes, however, is it costs 100 points the first time you use it, 500 points the second time you use it, and then I think it costs either 1,000 and then 2,000, or it jumps straight to 2,000 credits in order to use the trash chute. The good thing though, is that this price resets every single round change. And since I would only be pack-a-punching once every round, or sorry, upgrading my weapons every round, that means I was only spending 600 points in order to use the trash chute. But let me get on to what I would be doing here. Uh, like I said, I would be jumping between these two little platforms. Uh, and then I would be shooting either the mayhem down on the ground because that's where the zombies would gather or the crossbow and in my first run here since I had nano swarm grenades I would also be placing those right in the middle between where I would be jumping and I managed to do this quite successfully all the way up until about round 50 and then at this point I would be just running the single trap strategy which consists of putting this trap on and this trap puts lasers on the ground which initially turns these zombies into a crawler, but then those crawlers will then die the second time they go through the trap. And then as you are waiting for the trap to cool down, because the cooldown is 40 seconds, and the trap is only on for 20 seconds, every so often I would be slamming down on the zombies. And the reason I would be slamming down on the zombies is because I believe the slam does percentage damage to the zombies in which three slams on the zombies will kill them. Now, I'm not too sure if it's percentage damage or what, but if there were any crawlers left from the trap, I'm pretty sure one slam would pretty much instantly kill the crawlers. So either way, it was really nice. Unfortunately, this first game past 50 didn't last too long, as I ended up taking my third down in this game on around 55, and I ult f would because I had no confidence. So in my second game past 50, I basically did the exact same thing as the first game, 
except for the fact that this time I used distraction drones. And what they do is in their name, you basically throw one out and it acts basically like a distraction, kind of like monkey bombs from Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2. Except I would honestly put uh, distraction drones way higher up on the list than monkey bombs for how good they are. Because as soon as you throw them out, the zombies kind of just start to ignore you and go straight towards the distraction drone. And they are really awesome for getting out of some nasty situations. On top of this, I would also be swapping out my crossbow for the MP11, as this would be a faster weapon to run with, just like some of the speed weapons I mentioned on Black Ops 1. Now, unfortunately, in this game, I didn't last very long either, because I ended up taking three downs all the way until round 70, and once again, I rage quit because round 70 isn't even halfway to round 100. So, before I get on to how I actually managed to get this round 100 and what I did in order to change things around so that I wasn't, you know, dying as much, let me complain about some very, very annoying mechanics in this game that probably is the reason why people hate it so much. The biggest thing in this game that is the most annoying thing that I think everybody can agree on are those EXO EMP zombies. Basically, these zombies are called like EMZ zombies and what they do is whenever they hit you or you try and like use your EXO boost to boost in like one direction or jump up and they're in a large enough radius to hit you with their EXO ability is they will disable your EXO suit like you could be midair or you could be on the ground, it doesn't matter and your EXO suit will basically be down for a full 5 seconds now, that might not seem like that much, and it might seem like I'm complaining for kind of no reason, but when you have sometimes up to like 12 of these fucking zombies in a horde, all running after you, and you just constantly get hit with exosuit disabled, exosuit disabled, it is so annoying. Not to mention that half of the time when I go down, it's because of these little shits hitting me with the exosuit disabled bullshit when I'm in like the worst situation possible. And then in this clip of me dying on round 70, uh, I had to rewatch this clip like 10 times to actually figure out what even happened. And what it was is there was a fucking EMZ zombie on the ledge over here and he somehow managed to boost over to me, like make a massive jump that sometimes even I don't make. And he basically manages to whack me at the side before I'm even able to use my exo jump. And that's the reason I couldn't uh, do my double jump in this round 70 down and I just fell to the ground. Now, the second thing I want to talk about isn't as annoying, but it was really confusing for me at some points, and it's what I would like to call a jump fail. Basically, what a jump fail consists of is I would sometimes jump and then try to do my second jump. Bear in mind, I'm not hit with an EMZ at this point, so I should be able to jetpack jump, and it just doesn't work. Like, it just completely fails on me for some reason. And after like a few hours of this happening, I finally figured out what was preventing me from doing this. And so what happens is sometimes when I was trying to jump, some of these zombies would be jumping up on top of the box. And as I was about to do my second jump, it kind of, the zombie kind of bodies me and it just causes, I don't know, it just causes my character to just not be able to do the jump. And once again, this has put me in some quiet precarious situations in, during the game because obviously I'm expecting to be able to jump because I'm putting the input in and then this unknown thing is just happening to me and yeah it was just really frustrating for that to happen alongside just not being able to jump because of the EMZs. But with all the negatives out of the way I do want to point out one last positive thing about Advanced Warfare and that is their DNA bombs. So, the DNA bomb is basically Advanced Warfare's version of the nuke, and this nuke is absolutely incredible for high round players and speedrunners. So, on Black Ops 2, on Die Rise, for example, you'd see me just not bother picking up the nukes. 
And the reason for this is it takes forever for the zombies to actually die with this nuke. But with the DNA bomb, it pretty much instantly kills within like two or three seconds every single zombie on the map. And then the zombies immediately respawn. And it's just, it's just fantastic. It's like clearing out an extra horde immediately. And finally, there's also a new drop that they added in called security, which is pretty much just a trap activation uh, where it will activate all the lasers on the map. And also some doors will also just clamp onto zombies like they'll just basically shut the zombies heads into the doors and kill them. But this would mean if my trap was on cooldown, for example, it only been on cooldown for 20 seconds and I get a security drop. I could basically switch the trap on immediately. So with all of that out of the way, let me tell you how I managed to stop a downing. So obviously, as I've been explaining, the main cause for my downs were the EMZs. And the reason they were able to disable my exosuit so much is because of how much I was exo slamming. So in order to counteract this issue, I just didn't exo slam as much. In fact, I basically cut my exo movement down in half with this variation of the strategy that I did. So when the trap was on, I would play it like normal. I would jump between the boxes and the different ledges until the trap switched off. And then I would keep jumping between them for a little bit, just in order to get the horde up together. At which point I would slam down on the zombies. And this would be the only slam I did during this whole time, because I would then loop them on the ground of the exosuit area and this is because i basically had every single zombie behind me there were very few zombies that would respawn in front of me and i would basically do like two loops of the bottom by which point i would have perfect trap timing for jumping back up to the top and switching the trap on now if i did get unlucky enough to get hit by the emz zombie it's no worries because by the time I'm making my way back, I can just run up the stairs and switch the trap on and then drop back down. And so in this round 100 attempt where I finally get to round 100, I took one down on round 53. And then after that, I did not take a single down. And I managed to get to round 100 on Outbreak Advanced Warfare Zombies in 9 hours and 45 minutes. And because I had such a terrible time, I actually uninstalled the game immediately after I'd completed this. With that being said though, if somebody were to make a remix version of Advanced Warfare and make it so that the Mark 20 versions of the weapons, uh, like the Wonder Weapons only, were to be able to actually kill the zombies, I think I would be more inclined to play it. And I might go back and actually play it if that's the case. But with Advanced Warfare out of the way and done, it was finally time to go on to probably the fan favorite of every Call of Duty Zombies game to ever be released, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.